So we're gonna start off by just a really simple grasshopper function and functionality. And we'll just see what we can see from that within the Revit model. We're gonna do a very simple um, box and we're just gonna really do that with sort of re pretty much typical grasshopper geometry. We're gonna create a uh, rectangle. <clears throat> I'm gonna do that from two points. And mind that the Revit model is gonna be in feet, okay? And we're actually gonna base this right out of the, <clears throat> our typical uh, Rhino file. And what I'll do is I just create my two points. Just type it in here. That's my A and B points. <clears throat> And I'll just create another point here. All right, so I have the two points. I could just plug those straight in. And what I wanna do <laughs> is go ahead and just take this now, and I'm gonna just be, uh, let's see, just sort of a sort of straightforward from this point, as I will just make sure that I'm getting the type of data that I'm getting. Okay, so we're just going from Rhino, and the idea is I want to create a flow plate. Let's go over back into the Revit tab, and what we're gonna do is, uh, you see it's sort of, sort of small and minimized here. I'm gonna show you the workflow that I myself will use, uh, because I'm pretty much trying to create a floor, and I, I'm going for the Build tab. I'm not going to create too much extra. So essentially type is gonna be important, level is gonna be important, and structure is important. <clears throat> and one way to sort of get some of those like directly from the model is like, if I'm not gonna create a level, then I wanna know the levels that are in the model, right? That's, that's gonna be found using a query. And so the idea is, when I sort of have here, I can click on my levels picker, and it shows me the levels that are in the model. Okay, I can of course add models, layer levels later, but pretty much I just can just check, click any one here. And so I'll just plug that into my level. Gives you the option for if it's structural or non-structural. I'm gonna just click false. We have the ability for the type. And again, though I told you about the type variable and you can just type that in and click here. You have the options here. You actually also have those options directly here. Now the great thing about having it separate is that you have the ability to use it for other functions. So I'm trying to create a floor. You just type in sort of floor here and it gives me the list here and I just want a generic 12.4. Just click that. <clears throat> and so the, the last thing is just adding the boundary. I'm going to go ahead and add that boundary in and you'll see it take a, a couple you know, seconds or milliseconds. And now as I've, uh, and I'm gonna save this actually as well. And we we'll just uh, put this into my class folder. And what we do as we look into, so we of course see everything in Rhino. If I come back out, you'll see actually it's also the same in Revit. So that's my Revit geometry turned into uh, Rhino geometry, you know, pretty much Rhino into Revit geometry directly. Uh, and so the idea is it's still sort of housed and related to the function. That's why you see the, the lock. So it's, you know, anything I would change here would be changed here as well. Uh, for instance, if I wanted to rotate um, this, I could just, you know, have my particular angle. If I did, uh, zero to 180 and I had this set up to a issue here <laughs> could be doing that that framework here and turning that back in here and that's going to directly influence now I see <clears throat> I'll tell you the note things are directly updated in Rhino first, right? So now you see it here. You actually see that 3D representation. So it's actually, it's this Revit, it's going into Rhino and you're seeing it in Revit. 
as well. And then what happens is um, if you click on things, because again, if we go to that right on site tab, you will see where things are from original, right? And you'll see this as well. And so it's like I'm live editing the Revit file. Okay, and you want to be careful, of course, if you change things. A lot of things, maybe you'll, you know, keep your time a little bit so as to uh, understand that. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I can see how long things are taking as they're going into the model. And so you'd be wise about how long that takes. So that's just creating a basic uh, curve to floor um, method methodology. Okay, the next thing we could do is, well, first of all, if you want to make maybe multiple floors, right? we could start to think about levels. Levels are pretty important. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and take this and add a level and then go ahead and multiply the levels, okay? We, um, even to simplify things, because things are here, uh, one, of the, one of the things that you'll see sort of within uh, Rhino is that actually if you would go ahead and maybe even duplicate this, we're gonna just gonna be copy, and we can even just use the move command. And if we wanted to uh, move it up, maybe ten feet, and we'll use the unit Z, and we want to go ahead and just put that motion in, and we, we of course, and I'm just spreading these out so that I have enough space. Um, if you wanted to sort of create that other floor, uh, we could even just start saying, maybe if we would even try to take this and just multiply the floors, we could do that sort of here. Now, level, right now, uh, obviously if you just have one level, it's because it's one object. You actually can do multi-level. You're gonna have a little bit of issue because you only have one geometry. But if I went ahead and duplicated this, and merge the, the previous and the current one using the merge command. And just sort of turn this relay on. Uh, now I have sort of created two of these. And since I haven't really uh, seen that geometry go up, we're gonna make sure that we're uh, seeing that. And we'll just pull that geometry out here. So this is me making two floors, All right? And so these two floors are here, and now they're both into Revit. We need to make sure that we're getting two. So we have two curves going in, two boundaries, and what we can do uh, is like, as we look into what's going on in Revit, you only see in one. Um, and just need this. You're only gonna see one because we haven't graphed it. And when we graph that, we also can graph the level and put, now you'll see two levels. So that's your simple workflow for getting that through, okay? And so uh, <clears throat> that's, even if we wanted to try maybe a feature of maybe even rotating each of these. So we, we just rotated it um, on one level. If we wanted each level to sort of rotate a little uniquely, uh, that could be also, you know, the simple thing, like these floors could be going up. They're not tied. You can have like a particular orienting for each one of these. Okay, uh, but I'm just gonna leave it at that. And that's a sort of showing this. And now we wanna create our own levels. So we'll go through the exercise of creating a level. Um, for the purpose of creating a level, what we're gonna do first is we're going to uh, just start with a add level, which we know, of course, is from the model tab. We'll come back over here and just click for adding level. And the things that are gonna be needed are, of course, the type, the name, and the uh, particular elevation. So for instance, if I wanted to have a new level at maybe 20, um, I could just put it in here as 20. You plug that in now. Even just plug in with the basics. Um, it just needs a name, and I'll just say L 
I'll use my panel here and just do L3 and plug that name in. And that's all it needs to now show in Revit. As you can see here, and it's sort of uh, blocking a little bit going into Revit as I have a command running. Okay, so now I'm able to freely go back into Revit. So now you see that I've created my level here at 20. So the previous one was at one is 10, one is at uh, zero, and so now we have the level three at 20. And it's that simple. However, again, you notice that this type does not include it. I have the ability to change the type both in here, or I could choose maybe that particular type because it knows it's level, or I could use the type uh, variable <clears throat> and I could be plugging that in and uh, just choosing here that this is going to be a level, right? And uh, <clears throat> my idea is again, make sure you're aware of it. it's going to be uh, a which type of sort of category it is so you can also do all categories and just you can put in level heads and that's a, that's actually more of an annotation category but we can just click here click one of these circle something like this and we sort of select the type that will be coming out of here it gives like a little notice uh that didn't collect data make sure we just make a selection there and we can plug that in <clears throat> and again, uh, it will give us a mistake if it has an issue, and the current issue here is invalid uh, cast from family symbol. So the idea is uh, this was more of a, a tag, so we have to sort of step back a little bit and do level head, uh, or it might not be level head, maybe just level. All right. So there we have that selection. Now it's it's fine again. And so you, that's sort of your sort of workflow. Um, I will go into the picker as well uh, because uh, that's something that you know, is part of some people's workflow. Uh, you have the ability to sort of have an element type. Um, for instance, if I type in uh, levels, you know, you have the ability also to sort of have like this nice drop down. <clears throat> it doesn't work for all types, but again, it's it's another way of doing that. and. You could just plug that in there as well, and it does the same thing. And the same thing can be done uh, typically with walls. So we're gonna look at the input tab just a little bit, and we'll look at some other options we have for sort of creating that sort of uh, workflow. Okay, so we have, a, just like we had our sort of levels picker, um, we have a component families uh, picker just place that here where we also have the ability to search for different component families so we were looking for a particular type of wall it tells us you know different wall types here <clears throat> and so that's also another way of uh, sort of getting that variable type however these these two methods of the picker and if you you know double click in grasshopper you have also other types of pickers as well like title block type picker um, and that will help you sort of figure that out.